Hello everybody, this is Talky for another Shadowverse video and today we'll be ch changing things up a little bit. We'll be doing an interview of the one and only Mimor Extraordinaire Shadowverse caster number one YouTuber Ignidus. Ignidus, how is it going? <laughs> I'm doing well. It's uh, I kind of just woke up, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not completely there yet. But uh, what, what time yeah, is it? Okay. In Singapore? It's like... It's like 2 p.m. Okay. So uh, my sleep schedule is not the greatest right now, but you know that's kind of that's kind of normal. I feel like most internet personalities have a really messed up sleep schedule. So definitely. <laughs> so you're living on European time, morning. pretty much. It's seven yeah, Europe, so okay, pretty much European time. <laughs> it's less that I'm living on European time, more like I just get four hours of sleep and I just live with it, and that's fine. Yeah, four hours is a bit rough. So yeah. we'll do the interview in three parts. First, we'll talk a little bit about what you did before Shadowverse. Then we'll get into what you're doing at the moment with Shadowverse. Then we'll talk about uh, the future, you know, what you want to be doing in the next few months, in the next few years, what are your, uh, in the next few years, what are your goals? So let's start by a little introduction of you. I'll let you just introduce you in the broadest way uh, possible to people who might not know you or, yeah. Many to people who might not know you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure, that makes sense. Uh, I'm Ignidius. I'm known as a Shadowverse YouTuber, caster sometimes, and uh, as well. Um, basically, I just produce a lot of Shadowverse related content and card game content in general. And uh, that's basically what I do. And somehow I've become the, uh, I think, the largest English Shadowverse YouTuber. Uh, nowhere near the number one Shadowverse YouTuber overall, because the Japanese market, of course, is very large. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad and I'm grateful to be where I am. So, and that's who I am. So, yeah. Indeed. So you live in Singapore, right? I do. And is that something personal? How old are you <laughs> to try and treat you? Uh, how old am I? Yes. Uh, somewhere between the, uh, the ages <laughs> of one and 30. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I won't ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first question is how did you end up uh, getting into Shadowverse, you know? But even before discovering Shadowverse, what uh, kind of game communities were you a part of? Which other games did you play before playing Shadowverse? Because Shadowverse is only two years old. How did you get there? So, I, I mean, I played a lot of video games from all different genres since I was a kid. But uh, I guess the most relevant thing is that uh, I used to play a lot of Hearthstone. And uh, so I, I came from Hearthstone to Shadowverse in a way. So uh, I played Hearthstone from closed beta all the way until... I think it was Mean Streets of Gaijin. I don't know if you're aware um, of the Hearthstone expansions at all. Uh, but I basically, played at the beginning, but not sure right, afterwards. Right. Basically, I played it for a couple of years, and then uh, I kind of just got sick of it, and I wanted mm -hmm. to try something else. And uh, I found Shadowverse, and I'm like, okay, I'll give this a shot. And then uh, it's been a love story ever since. I've been uh, just playing the game for over probably over two thousand hours by now. Shadowverse, so yeah, <laughs> I just played a lot. <laughs> that that's quite the score. So you came mm. from Hearthstone and other card games. Did you play a little bit of physical card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon TCG, Magic? Yeah, when I was a kid, I played Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but in terms of card game experience, I would say it's not that much. Like I basically went from card games, like physical Yu-Gi-Oh, when I was a kid, to Hearthstone for a couple of years, and then to Shadowverse. So uh, my breadth of, uh, of CCG knowledge isn't as wide as I'd like it to be. But I've been starting to get into Magic a little bit here and there, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, crack into that sooner rather than later, because I'm really enjoying what I've been playing of uh, Magic the Gathering so far. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to, is playing more of that. Did you take part in Grand Prix Singapore this weekend, or no? The Grand Prix in <laughs> there, Singapore? There was Grand Prix Singapore, I think, this weekend, uh, won by Yuki Chika, a famous Japanese oh. streamer of Magic the Gathering. No, I'm nowhere near that level. I basically okay. just started. it. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still a very much new to the game of Magic the Gathering, so yeah. Uh, I see. A newbie, basically. I basically only play mono red because that's the only thing I can play. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I feel like ag aggro decks get a bad rep in card games in general, mm -hmm. but actually there's a oh, lot yeah, of decks for them. Sure. You know, in the early games, since all your cards are so cheap, you have to have perfect sequencing. The si a, a single mistake will be the end of you because you cannot mm -hmm. afford to take a step back. So, I mean, they get a bad rep. Oh. I feel like they're interesting to play as well. Oh, no, I agree. <laughs> it's just that uh, right now in standard... Uh, everybody's a monorail chain. player. <laughs> Goblin Chain Whirler exists, and uh, that's kind of unfair. So. Yeah, it is the truth. Yeah. I see. So, regarding uh, your transition from Hearthstone to Shadowverse, how did you hear about Shadowverse, and what made you want to try it? What appealed to so you like, in Shadowverse? 
so before I started doing Shadowverse videos, I, I created videos uh, for a lot of different card games and various uh, game Let's Plays and such on my channel, which is why my channel is called Ignidius LP. The LP stands for Let's Play. But that kind of went out the window when I started doing Shadowverse. I heard <laughs> about Shadowverse when I, uh, when I was watching some other streamer play it, and I think it was a sponsored stream, and they were like showing off Shadowverse, and I think it was a Hearthstone streamer. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Raynad, actually. Oh. I saw Raynad play Shadowverse, and I'm like, okay, this looks interesting. So then I, I tried it out, and uh, I loved it. So then I just started playing it. And um, in terms of video content, I didn't really start making video content for Shadowverse until Rise of Bahamut came out. Mm -hmm. But I've been playing the game since it came out, vanilla release. So, yeah. So did, did you play in the beta as soon as with I the old UX and everything? No, <laughs> I didn't play in beta. No, I think I, I just got it. I got it when it launched, basically. So I think, I think that wave of sponsored streams that Raynad was part of was um, probably that they had like a marketing push for when the game was released. And so I, I probably got in around the time the game was released. I see. Yeah, just to bounce on that, a, a few seconds about how I heard about Shadowverse. Uh, it, since I live in Japan, personally, I saw ads in the subway and heard about it. And oh, yeah. Yeah, here it's just so big at the moment. For the second anniversary, you see ads everywhere for Shadowverse. So I feel like it's funny because in Japan, you hear about the game in very different ways. Whereas in uh, the Western countries, it's way more community-based. And I, I know a lot of people came through the, the Hearthstone streamers. So. It's true that in Japan, uh, the game is a lot more widespread and mainstream, whereas in other regions, it's a bit more niche and you sort of rely on these online communities. But um, in Japan, when I was there, you'd see people of all walks playing Shadowverse. Like on the train, you'd see like an old man playing it. You'd see like an office lady playing it. You'd see some kids playing it. Like basically anyone. Uh, when I was on the one of the trains in Tokyo, I saw like this really gigantic muscular man, tattoos up and down. He's playing Shadowverse on his phone. It's like, oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, everybody. Like it's, it's really interesting. Whereas here, it's a bit less, uh, less mainstream, I'd say. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hopefully that, that starts to change. Yeah. Little by little, it's growing forward in, in, on the Western side. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, regarding, by the way, uh, Shadowverse uh, as a game, so regarding, for example, the graphic, uh, the graphic design and everything, is it something that appealed to you? Like, are you into anime and stuff like that? Is this one of the reasons why you started or not at all? It's not one of the reasons why I started at all. No, I mean, I'm, I mean, I think everybody who plays Shadowverse is a little bit of a weeb. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, but... Yeah, no, it wasn't one of the reasons why I started. I started because of, uh, of the evolution mechanic. As soon as I saw the evolution mechanic, I'm like, okay, I'm in. I'm going to try this out. This looks really interesting. Uh, and then I really got into it. But in terms of the art style itself, like, the, the sad truth is, is that that art style is both a, a blessing and a curse to the game in terms of it gets people in, but also makes people stay away at the same time. I just hope that there's some people like me who get into it for the gameplay mechanic itself. And I think if they do do that, then um, they'll, be, they'll be pleased. Mm, yeah, it's definitely very polarizing, but uh, so this is what one uh, one of the points of Shadowverse I feel I find really interesting. On the one side, the gameplay is really great, and I feel like they managed to build a game where you really have great gameplay experience, and competitive players love it because the variance mm -hmm. is still pretty low. You have quite a, a lot of options in terms of deck building, deck selections, and at the same time, there is this not casual but very uh, graphical appealing side that appeals to a completely different crowd. And in the end, in the community, you, uh, you end up having sort of a split, you know. On one side, you have the tryhards, the competitive players, and on the other side, you have people who love the really the game for the graphical aspect, for the waifus and all that. And I feel like it's right. a very interesting part of the Shadowverse community. I really feel like it's almost split. I think a lot of games are like that, though, especially card games where you have the people who just go, you know, go in and play their Friday nights or whatever, and the, the people who like are tournament grinders. Uh, I think in Shadowverse specifically, uh, it, it's mostly a casual-based audience just because uh, it kind of lends itself to that really well with you know, the whole fact that it was a mobile game first before anything else. But the competitive scene is, is kicking up, and it, it's still big. But uh, yeah, for Shadowverse specifically, I think that the, the casual base is, is huge. Yeah. But yeah, it, for, for me, it's also it's always such a weird dilemma because I feel like it's so competitive in the mechanics. So in the game feeling, you know, for example, the game only rewards you for winning. You almost get, you, you just get the daily bonus for playing, mm -hmm. but you're really incentivized to play the best deck. You have the Grand Prix modes where you're incentivized to try, try hard. And at the same time, it has a very casual atmosphere. So why do you think it's that? I think it's this new age of um, digital card games. And, you know, believe, I mean, the fact of the matter is that, is that Hearthstone sort of blew the gates wide open 
Uh, before Hearthstone, most card games were seen as a super competitive thing or something you played, you know, just as a kid. Um, and, and really most of the, of the play at that point is, is uh, other than, you know, if you're a kid, is, is really competitive. But because of Hearthstone and the advent of digital card games, it became a lot more accessible to the casual audience. But for Shadowverse specifically, while they, of course, want to appeal to the casual audience because most games live and die on their casual uh, player base, uh, the people behind Shadowverse themselves, side games, are huge fans of Magic the Gathering. So I think they're very competitive players at heart. So they're kind of trying to bridge the, uh, the two sides of it. And I think they've done a pretty okay job. Mm, yes, indeed. But yeah, I, I found that a very interesting part of Shadowverse, definitely. And yeah, speaking of the people who worked on Shadowverse, so the first time I heard about Shadowverse was because of ads, but the reason why I tried it is because the Psy Games team, uh, the Psy Games team won the World Magic Cup this year. So three, that's true. The Japanese team, and that's why I actually tried it uh, last October, I think. They won, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll give it a shot. They're all game designers on Shadowverse. They just won the World Magic Cup, you know. Maybe I yeah, should try their yeah. game, it's very popular here. And that's how they got me into it, so... Yeah, they, def they definitely have a lot of appeal and a lot of knowledge regarding card games in general. Like they, they have both at once. Very big aura of being very skilled as well as just doing great card games. Mm -hmm. So, to continue a little bit uh, on Shadowverse, so where do you see the game evolving and who would you like to see it evolve? For example, you're talking about the casual player base. Do you feel like there should be uh, more content for casual players because you have the story mode? But outside of that, the other game modes are still pretty competitive. For example, in Magic the Gatherings, lots of players just play Commander, you know, four players, games where everything goes a bit crazy and you're not really playing two one decks. You're more, you, you only have si uh, singletons, so only one of each card. Do you feel like this type of format should be maybe added into Shadowverse? Or how do you see the game moving forward and what would you like to see? I mean, I'm all for stuff like Commander in different formats in the game, but I totally understand the apprehension of uh, side games to split the player base even more, because that's something you don't usually want to do mm -hmm. in a multiplayer computer game. The fact of the matter is, um, more than it is a card game, Shadowverse is a video game, uh, you know, because of all the random effects and the fact that it's all you know, online, you can't play it offline. So that's just the fact that of the matter. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand the apprehension behind it. And that's why um, I really like the idea behind Grand Prix. And what I want for them to sort of, personally, what I want is to, to sort of have this good compromise where you can use Grand Prix as a vehicle for those kinds of formats. Say, imagine if Grand Prix was like, for one week, there was a Commander Grand Prix. Like, like the Grand Prix we have right now, the Take Two Grand Prix right now is super cool. It's a completely new format, it's completely different. You can't play it anywhere else. They need to do more of that instead of just, you know, Rotation Cup or Unlimited Cup. More unique Grand Prix, I think, would really allow the casual player base to get in because it allows them to play with cards that they may not be able to uh, play with before, like the one we have right now. Uh, and it allows them to, for a week, experience something uh, new and interesting with, and if they keep giving out these free daily runs like they have been for the mm. past Grand Prix, then it allows them to, uh, to get into the game even more. So I think for casual players, that is an aspect that can be explored rather than just having these rotation and limited cups, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, other than that, I've been telling them this for years, not for years rather, <laughs> but since I've known them, I've been telling them this. Uh, the game needs more social features. <laughs> Basically, whenever I talk yeah, to Psy fun. Games, I'm like, I'm like, listen, the friends list doesn't do anything, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really privy to say anything, mm. but um, I, I'll just say that I have been bringing it up uh, whenever Wait. I get the chance. So mm, I yeah, really I hope that that's a thing. Yeah, I Especially since a lot of the... Uh, go, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, I'll bounce on that later. Uh, it's just that a lot of the players who are playing Shadowverse right now, especially with the current collaboration with Grand Blue Fantasy, they're coming from these games that don't really have this huge competitive edge. Mm -hmm. So Grand Blue Fantasy, for example, it's not really a competitive game. It's very PvE. It's actually, like, it's actually almost all PvE other than Guild War, and even that, it's just like collaborative PvE. <laughs> okay. So uh, it, it's something that I think Shadowverse could do to, to uh, sort of cater to these players who are coming from these other side games games over to Shadowverse is to have stuff like you know, more social features, uh, things like guilds and stuff like that. Um, I think that could be really helpful. Uh, but, you know, priorities, I guess. Of course, the, the game itself and the mechanics and the balance and the expansions come first. But, you know, if they ever have the spare resources, it would be great to see these uh, quality of life improvements to appeal to a wider player base. It would be great. I see. In indeed, there are some stuff that could be done in the client. 
And I was thinking about the Chinese uh, update. I've heard a lot of things about the Chinese version of Shadowverse, which has replay mm -hmm. sharing and lots of other options I've heard about, but I've never seen them. And I was wondering maybe yeah. we would be getting them one day, you know? I don't think that's that's happening anytime okay. soon. Unfortunately, <laughs> the Chinese version of Shadow... I mean, I can't say anything. Like, I'm not from Psy Games, obviously. I'm just a guy. Uh, but as far as I understand it, the Chinese version of Shadowverse is developed by or handled by at least another company mm -hmm. so they're doing their own thing over there and side games doing their own thing over here so I eh. see. of course i can't i can't say for certain because you know i'm, I'm not yeah, side games obviously we I'm don't just know the guy the <laughs> but uh but yeah i don't think that's happening anytime soon unfortunately i mean i wish it was uh, i really wish it was yeah i feel like uh social features are definitely are definitely needed in particular team features because in card games so you have some randomness of course and one of the ways to get to have tournaments where you cannot reduce the randomness is to have team tournaments. Because if you have three mm. good players playing together, they're way more likely to win a round than three than one random player playing one best of three. And also there is a social aspect of it. So for example, in Magic the Gathering, in the past two years, they've been pushing team tournaments a lot, uh, where they had cut down on them, and now you have a team Grand Prix somewhere in the world almost twice a month where it was uh, twice a year before. So I, I feel like maybe Shadowverse will take inspiration from that and try to build more team-based uh, content. And for example, they do have the Pro League here in Japan, which is in team format. So maybe, maybe one day we'll see more team-focused Shadowverse. I don't know, but that would be good. Mm. I think it's really such a shame too, because uh, one of the appeals of card games, at least to me, when I was a kid and when I was... Uh... Uh, I mean, now as well, is that it's the social aspect. You know, you go into the Friday night, you play your magic, you meet new people, you meet new players. Uh, and then in, in terms of Shadowverse, um, while the gameplay itself is good, it's, it's lacking in that, as in that social aspect because uh, you can't even talk to people on your friends list. So it's a bit weird, hey? <laughs> it's true. It's like, it's like the antithesis of, what, um, of, one of, the, of one of the big draws of card games, that social aspect. And Shadowverse doesn't really have any of it. Like, it might as well... Um, like, if you didn't know that the person you were playing against was a person, it <laughs> kind of feels like it, it's a single-player game, like, a lot of the time, just because there's no way to interact with people. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, why, one of the points, I feel like, is that, like a lot of Japanese developers, you know, the developers, the people who make the game, they don't really have uh, an idea of what it's, uh, what it's like outside of Japan. And Shadowverse is very big in Japan. And for example, the social aspect of Shadowverse in Japan is pretty well developed because your friends will be playing Shadowverse. You, you will be That's playing right, with yeah. them regu regularly. So even though the game doesn't have anything built in, you still have this social aspect that you don't have in the West because the player base is smaller. And something, you know, we've seen in the past with like Nintendo and the Wii U developing a product really centered around the Japanese market and kind of and having a problem when they get when they got to the West. So I feel like this could be part of the I problem. Think, I think side games doesn't really have an excuse. They already <laughs> made like these social features in Grand Blue Fantasy. They already have it in Rage of Bahamut as well. It's like you just need to. I know. Okay, I'm not a game developer, and I know it's not this simple. But like you know how to do it. You just need to implement yeah. it into the uh, into the other game, right? Like it's it's the same company making these two different games. One of them has really, really well-developed social features, and the other one has non-existent ones. I think uh, both teams could learn something from each other. Yeah, you, you have to ask uh, Kimura-san. He's a producer, so... He's the one <laughs> yeah. who would decide. <laughs> He's somebody... Oh, yeah, let me just, <laughs> let me just speed dial Kimura-san, of course. Kimura -san, Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, why... I... <laughs> <laughs> he was there at the, at the Rage Open. <laughs> uh, he is there. Unfortunately, I don't really have, like, a direct line... To Kimura -san. <laughs> Kimura -san. So I don't think anybody does really, unless you're really, really important. Or um, um, yeah, it, it, it's a bit complicated. I also don't know how good his English is. So this is also like I don't feel like they can get feedback directly from the West. If they want feedback, they will need it to be translated, and it's going to take time and more resources. Just, so it's also part of. The I was just making a joke. Yeah, <laughs> Kimura -san is a is a very important person, and it'll be very hard to reach. Him. <laughs> okay. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> He's like the god of the community, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's kind of like the, the lead of it all, so yeah. It's true. He's the one doing everything. So, uh, since we're talking about social features, I want to hear a bit more about you and your relationship with the Shadowverse community. So, uh, how do you view your role in the community? Like, what are you trying to, to do for the community? And what kind of values are you trying to push? 
I don't know, man. I'm just a guy who wants to make videos, and if people enjoy them, that's that's uh, that's man, then I'll enjoy it. That's mm-hmm. the entire reason why I make videos is to to have other people enjoy them. Um, for me, more than anything else, I just view myself as a content creator. Like mm-hmm. I love, I love the fact that I have opportunities to cast. And I think I'm pretty good at it, and I think I'm getting better at it every time I do it. Uh, and I love the fact that I'm giving back to the community in that way, and that I'm helping to foster the scene. But I think above all else, I'm just a guy who wants to make videos, and if people enjoy them, then that's all the better. I see. Also, yeah, I have a question. How do you see yourself as a Shadowverse player? Like, are you more of the the Johnny type, you know, trying to do the, uh, stuff out of the box, or are you, are you more the competitive type? Like, who would you define yourself as a Shadowverse player? I'm like 70% Johnny, 20% okay. <laughs> Timmy, and 10% Spike. I'm like oh, very little. I, I'm, I might be like five percent spike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have around, around, a little bit of it, but not that much. Mm, I'm like seventy, twenty, ten, maybe. Yeah, something around. Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> something different, but generally it's around around that. I see. When, when Grand Prix comes on, you're a hundred percent spike, but out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But by the way, did you do your your Grand Prix run in in Take Two today? I haven't, I haven't played done it my yet. Finals yet. Okay. Yeah, not yet. Too scary. Too scary. <laughs> I mean, I'm not scared. Like again, I'm very little spike, so I don't really <laughs> care if I go zero one. Like I'm just gonna go pick up my sleeve and walk away. <laughs> You'll have Fine. the wolves. Yeah. I see. So okay, uh, another question I have outside of your own YouTube channels, who are sort of your favorite content creators, streamers, or players in the Shadowverse community? Like, who do you enjoy seeing at conventions the most? And yeah, in the community, who inspires you? Well, truth be told, uh, ever since I started doing content creation more seriously and I started doing it a lot more, I've had much, much, much less time to consume content. Mm-hmm. So in terms of watching other people, it's been far lower than I'd, uh, I'd like it to be. But in terms of who I'd like to see at conventions, every single time, I'm always super happy to see my co-casters again. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, we live on opposite sides of the world and we only kind of meet up every time there's a cast. So whenever I get to see, you know, Exodium or, or Aya or any of my other co-casters who I work with on production, uh, it's always a blast for me. It's like I'm seeing, you know, friends who I haven't seen in a long time uh, once more, and it's always a fun time for that. <laughs> And you get to meet them all over the uh, the world. You've been to Europe. You've been to Japan. Have you been to the US for casting already? I haven't been to the US for casting, but I went there for TwitchCon, uh, mm-hmm. but not for casting. I see. It's going to be next, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. I have to hope, right? Unfortunately, I don't think I can make it to DreamHack Montreal. But, uh, oh. yeah. Too bad. I, I, I've managed to motivate a League of Legends player, a, an ex-pro from the LCS, to go to DreamHack Montreal. He's learned the game. He started three weeks ago, and he'll be there. He would have loved to meet you, I'm sure. But hey, yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but hey. Sometimes, uh, we, you can't go to every event, I guess. Yeah, it, it, and it gets pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, regarding uh, players in particular, do you have any players uh, you look up to? It could be professional players or amateurs. <laughs> in terms of players I look up to... Um... What I really, I mean, I mean, of course, I enjoy seeing all the competitive players and I respect their tournament grind. Uh, but the one I can personally relate to in terms of players is uh, are players who are trying to break into the content creation scene mm-hmm. uh, or casting scene. So players like Jay Z and Akamai Red, who I recently casted Rage with, Four, or you know, Epicus, who's doing a lot of production lately and stuff like that. I really, really enjoyed seeing them branch out. Uh, fact of the matter is, uh, the way to get your face and name out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a card game specifically, isn't by being a tournament grinder. Of course, you can build a name up for yourself by being a tournament grinder. And I'm, I'm not diminishing tournament grinders in any way, shape, or form here. Uh, but if you want to really get your face and name out there, uh, you go to one of these big high-profile events, like, for example, World Grand Prix or Rage. Mm-hmm. You do well, then you take that and you run away with it by doing your own content after that, and you build a brand off of yourself. So seeing these players recognize that and be able to uh, start that grind in terms of not just being a, a good player, but also being a good entertainer or an, and a good you know, person who creates content and produces content. Uh, that's what I really like to see. So I guess to answer your question in a roundabout way, uh, players like Akamai Red and Jay-Z, who are not only amazing players, but 
you know, also take the time to try and learn the other facets of creating content for this game. That's uh, who I really, I guess, I wouldn't say respect because, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to <laughs> take a team like I'm getting like some respect than other players. Like, I don't want to make a team that way. But uh, that's something I can relate to. And, and I, mm-hmm. I, I like seeing that personally. I see. Yeah. In Magic the Gathering in particular, it's very big. Like all the big names play, all the big name players are very big name content creators, and they, right. that's they why that's where they make money. And like that. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. It's, like it's it's accepted in the Magic the Gathering community that if you're a top player, you will take a jig as an article writer and video producer for one of the big Magic the Gathering website, and that's how you right. actually make your money. Like you'll make some money from winning tournaments, but how you'll make an actual monthly salary will be content creation. It's completely accepted. There is almost no pro who doesn't do content in Magic the Gathering. All the top 30, top 50 of the world rankings are doing content every single week. Mm. So yeah, I guess it's something that needs also to come to Shadowverse because it would be a big help to give more visibility to the players because then the viewers relate much more to players as they read their articles regularly. You know, they know what they like, they know what they will be playing, they they know they they feel like they know them better, and the competitive players can get more money in the end, and they can actually do that full time and dedicate much more time to Shadowverse. So I feel like it's a win win situation. Love, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, th- I feel like a lot of people really like the competitive grind, and I'm not mm-hmm. saying that not to do it, because obviously it's, it's, it's good, and it's good to challenge yourself. Um, but in terms of actually having a steady sort of future, uh, you know, content creation is, is a lot more stable than mm-hmm. hoping to win your next tournament. Yes. Uh, it's like, you know. Yeah, the, the two big uh, examples that come to mind would be LSV and Jerry Thompson. And LSV, no, he's a game designer. He makes his own card game, Eternal. Uh, he is a Hall of Famer in Magic the Gathering, and he casts the Pro Tool for them. You know, he does it all at the same time. I feel like this is a kind of career uh, Shadowverse Pro players should also be looking forward to. If the game, you know, continues for many years, they will also get older, and they will want more stable jobs, and this is where, you know, content creation will also help a lot. So let's wait and see where this brings us. Mm-hmm. So to close this, uh, I want to hear more about your plans for the future. You know, where do you see yourself in one, two, five years, ten years? Do, do you want to still continue be, uh, making content or maybe get into game creation? I know a lot of casters get into that after a few years. W- what appeals to you? I would love to just keep doing this for as long as possible. Honestly, um. <sighs> Obviously, I'm not stupid. I know all the good things come to an end, and uh, you know, <laughs> the, this this it won't last forever. Mm-hmm. But you know, if, if it can last for the next five, ten years, I'll be really happy. And I think part of that is going to be branching out as well, like uh, you know, trying new things all the time. I feel like people who stagnate aren't growing, and if you're not growing, you're dying, and that's that's something that I've taken to heart. Uh, so for me. What I want to do in the near future is to start making more content, more types of content uh, on various different games. Uh, but for now, I'm quite happy with Shadowverse, and I think Shadowverse is going to last a long time as well. Uh, but uh, in 10 years, that's kind of a far <laughs> off thing yeah, to, to think it, about. Uh, it's always far for people our age, but do you have a, an idea? Do you want to still be in Singapore? Do you want to go somewhere else? I, I'm, just gonna kinda, I'm just kind of kind of go with it and see what happens. I feel like worrying too much. I mean, it's always good to plan, but I feel mm-hmm. like worrying too much uh, doesn't help you at all. Yeah. Uh, what I'd hope is the case is that I'll just be able to keep doing what I'm doing, making more content, because that's honestly all I've ever wanted to do. And now that I'm in a position to be able to do it, I'm not going to let go mm-hmm. if I can help it. <laughs> I see. So you're the YOLO type, you know. You'll see. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm not like, you know, throw caution to the mm-hmm. wind, but I'm just like, I'd rather not stress out about things that I have no control over. I'll just see, I'll plan and do my best, obviously, but I'll just see where the road takes me. Uh, I see. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll try and heavily steer it towards the direction. Of content creation. And... Yep. For as long as I can muster in any case. Okay. So, yeah, that, that sounds like it's going to last for a few years, definitely. Like, card games have a bright future before them. Uh, Hearthstone is, what, five years old now? Magic, 25. Mm-hmm. Shadowverse, two years old. It's definitely sustainable. And may- maybe if it's not Shadowverse in the future, you'll definitely find your footing somewhere else. Like, it- it's true. I know you have a very big following, and people love your videos. So 
whatever you do in the future, I think you'll be successful. So good luck. And I hope you'll still be Thanks. doing videos in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I mean, <laughs> Old man I, can't videos. Imagine, I can't imagine doing a desk job after doing this. I can't imagine going into a, doing a desk job again and being <laughs> dead inside. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I'd rather just keep doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, I actually did the desk job part because I, I did work as a caster five and six years ago in France. Then I stopped to have a real job for three years and I absolutely hated real it. Real job. And this is why, you know, <laughs> I went back to the esports and video game tournament side of things and I couldn't be mm -hmm. happier. I definitely re can relate. I tried going yeah. back and I, I won't try again. It, it's over. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel that. So is there... Yeah, I think we... This was a very interesting interview and we got to learn a lot about you. Is there anything you would like to say to the viewers, to maybe your fans, to... I don't know. Whatever. The floor is yours. Then we'll cut it. All right. Uh, well, so to say... You know, I'm really glad and I'm grateful for everything. Um, I never thought that I'd get to a position where I was being interviewed by somebody else. <laughs> so that's interesting. Uh, other than that, you know, just all the regular plugging stuff, youtube.com slash Ignidius LP, twitch.com, sorry, twitch.tv slash Ignidius, twitter.com slash Ignidius LP, all that. Uh, you can find Patreon.com slash Ignidius LP as well. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ignidius and okay. discord.gg slash Ignidius if you want to join my Discord server. And that's it. Okay, so thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. Uh, have a nice day. My, my pleasure, man. <laughs> uh, have a nice day. Wake up properly and good luck for your next videos. I'll be looking forward to them with the rules of Brigade of the Sky. I feel like you will have a few very busy weeks coming for you. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> good luck. And see you very soon on the Shadowverse broadcast or something. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. See you.